This is a, an assembly video for the uh, Dragonfly DIY uh, 9 LED uh, simple red blinky. Uh, you should have gotten the main circuit board, 9 LEDs, a resistor, a little tactile switch, an IC socket, the pre-programmed ATtiny85 uh, processor, battery socket, battery, and a uh, little uh, clip that you hang it from. Now, to assemble it, the first thing you probably want to do is put in the IC socket. It's the shortest thing, so it's going to be the hardest thing to hold in. Flick down the two diagonal, doesn't matter, just a couple of diagonal wires there to hold it in place while you solder it in. This isn't a soldering tutorial necessarily, but uh, just very quickly, what you want to do is the soldering iron should press in, like, assuming this is the, uh, the wire going into this, to the uh, to the circuit board, take the soldering iron, the soldering iron, the idea is to heat up both the little metal pad and the wire. They both have to be hot enough to melt the solder in order to form a good uh, joint between the two. So you want to take the soldering iron, touch it into the corner that formed by those two things, dab a little bit of solder, probably scrape it across the soldering iron tip onto the uh, wire in the board to help uh, heat transfer and then once that heats up you should be able to push a little bit of solder into the uh, into the joint and then you want to remove the solder leave the soldering iron on the joint for maybe like one second then pull it away and then allow it to cool for a second so we'll do these solder joints here. My, solder, uh, my soldering iron is maybe a little cold. I'll turn it up a little bit. No, it's okay, it's going. Sometimes it just takes a little while to get going here. Oh, come on. the looks of that joint there. There it goes. Let me see how close this thing can focus. So, eh, there you can kind of see about what it should look like. Okay, then you want to take the switch. The switch, you'll notice these holes are not in a square, it's a rectangle. So, the switch does have to go in a specific way um, and it should just snap into place and it holds itself there really well. This resistor, tiny little thing here, bend the wires in a U like that, goes into this position right here, into these two holes, pull it down flush to the board, bend the wires to hold it in place. Um, then you can solder those six things in the same way. Okay, now you want to take a pair of cutters, which I don't...
wasn't quite prepared to have my on hand. Take a pair of cutters. Now, I've seen people try to like shave the solder like off right at the board. That's a real bad idea because so you you need to leave that solder little bead there because uh, that's part of the mechanical connection. So you want to cut the wire off, but don't like smash down into the solder. Um, it'll just cause uh, cause you trouble. Uh, now you need to put in all of the LEDs. Now on the LEDs you'll notice that one of the wires there, let me see if I can there get a reflection off of there, one of the pads is square, one of them is round for each one of those LED positions. When you look at the LED you'll notice that one of the wires is shorter than the other. You need to put the short lead into the square hole for this blinky. And you can just go ahead and put them all in like that at the same time. And uh, once you get that done, you can flip the thing over and you can check to be sure that the wires all go alternating short, long, short, long, short, long. This is the most exciting video in the world. I'm sort of blocking your view there, aren't I? Um, there. Now you can see that these leads go. I don't know which. Okay, it's easier to see up against the dark background. Long, short, long, short, long, short. If you're not getting that, then you've got an LED in backwards. You need to fix that. You probably can just get away with just flipping this over like that instead of having to bend the leads or anything like that. Let me see if I can uh, get around to where I'm not blocking your view quite so much. Um, one thing that I saw a video blogger, Ben Heck, in case you uh, are a fan, the, say the other day was that he likes to solder in one, only one lead of each LED and then that allows him to uh, flip the board over look to see if the LEDs are in a position that he likes make any adjustments before soldering the second wire in. Once you solder the second wire in, it's a little harder. Yeah, see, look at, yeah, I've, for some some reason, these things all popped out, and I really want them to be flushed down, so I can just do this and push them in, push them down to where I want them to be. So maybe bending the leads over isn't such a bad idea. Either way, whatever works for you. You know, this is a pretty straightforward project. As long as it works at the end, who's to say you did it wrong? Seen a lot of people put these things together and Everybody does it a little different, and at the end of the day, everybody's got a working blinky. So as far as I'm concerned, they all did it right. here. So all look fine. When you clip these leads, the, the, the uh, resistor leads are pretty skinny, but these leads are like steel. And when you clip these, they can go shooting away. So put your finger in front of them like this, because I've seen them go shooting across rooms, and you don't want to have them fly into somebody's eye.
Oops, that one went flying. Almost done. Uh, now the battery holder. Battery holder goes on the back side. Only, it's not critical, doesn't matter, but uh, it's a little ugly. And uh, you don't want to cover up the nice logo there. Um, notice that there's a little square bit there on the uh, artwork. There's a square bit on the battery holder as well. Those two should line up. If they don't, well, your battery's in backwards, and that never works well. I'm going to flip this around the other way. I don't want to touch the LEDs with my soldering iron, because I might burn them. That's not recommended practice. There. We are done. Now, you need to uh, put the chip in. First you want to check, just take another quick look. Make sure the, the only real two things that can happen here are if you have too much solder on these connections and you have a piece of solder that is joining two wires together, well that's a short circuit. And uh, it's called a solder bridge. And you need to get rid of that. Um, see if I can just make a solder bridge here. I'll just put on a ton of solder. See if I can... There we go. Got something that looks like that. Need to get rid of it. Um, sometimes you can just pull it away with a soldering iron. Like that. Yeah, that works. Um, flip off the excess on your soldering iron just by tapping it and just heat, heat it up, pull it away, see if that takes care of it. If it doesn't, then honestly what I've done sometimes is heat it up and then while the solder is still hot, tap it on the table. Don't, uh, by the way, I should have said this at the beginning, don't do this on your uh, nice uh, tablecloth or uh, whatever. Uh, if you don't have any other work surface, uh, get a piece of cardboard or something to work on. Anyway, um, once you're sure that uh, you don't have any solder bridges, all the wires are actually soldered. One thing that I see people uh, do a lot is they're too sparing with the solder. You, you know, solder's not uh, gold. It's not a precious metal. Get some solder on these things. Uh, you need to have the proper amount of solder to make a good uh, connection. If the uh, if if it just looks like you just sort of waved a little solder in its direction, uh, you need more solder on there. Now this chip, okay, this 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 is the top of the board, the part with the slot. This chip, I don't know if you can see, it's a little dragonfly, and it goes into the socket right side up, uh, the same direction as the artwork on the board. Now, you can see this doesn't quite fit. Uh, it's, the legs are spread out a little bit. What you can do is push, put one side in like that. Give it a push on the body, not on the legs. And if you push it over, it might drop in. If not, well, you've bent this side to where it's pretty square now. Do the same thing from the other side. And it should drop in like that. You want to make sure that there aren't any legs bent over, that all the legs went straight in, and give it a little extra push because I've seen these things get caught just by people setting them down and the LED and their chip goes flicking out, and this thing isn't very useful if it doesn't have the chip. Okay, get your battery. Ugh. If I can get my battery out of here. Who designs these cases anyway? Anyway, you know the battery has two sides. This side faces out, this side faces in. Um, there's a latch here. Put it in like this and then flip it down like that. 
and it starts running immediately. Now I'm going to turn, turn this light off so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing here. Um, to turn it off, hold the switch down for two seconds. To turn it back on again, double click. It will run an LED test first thing. So you should see it lighting each LED in sequence before it starts running normal patterns. If you see an LED uh, blink out of sequence, like if it goes one, two, and then maybe three and five or three and nine come on at the same time, whichever one blinked out of sequence is in backwards. Um, similarly, if it goes one, two, and then it and then three doesn't come on, either it's in backwards or there's some kind of a uh, problem with uh, probably that you didn't quite solder it properly on the back. If a bunch of LEDs just simply don't light properly or multiple LED, a whole lot of LEDs come in on wrong and you don't think you put them in backwards, then probably there's a bad uh, connection on the chip itself. Because each one of these L uh, legs on the chip is uh, responsible for more than one LED. So if one of them isn't connected, there'll be more than one LED that doesn't work properly. Anyway, uh, take your little strap, stick it through, snap it on, turn it on, and it's ready to wear. Uh, real quickly, um, if you flip on, every time you press the button, it goes into a different mode, and you can see that it's counting in binary through the modes. Uh, and if you go to the mode where all of the LEDs suddenly come on, right there, that's the demo mode. That's the mode you probably want to leave it on most of the time. In that mode, it will do each pattern for one minute or so, and then it will just cycle to the next pattern. Anyway, I hope you were successful building your Blinky, and uh, wear it around, and everybody will think that uh, you're a genius for building the thing. Thanks.